Tall, wow. Osaka <laughs> was counting them two and then gave up. <laughs> <laughs> Another three, four, and more. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, we stopped counting. Wow, look how beautiful. Slope with blow bait flows? It looks like broken up rock like rock fragments and low bait flows. What? Which okay. way are you going? One so five, yes. Right? They look very battery level. Oh. Should, should Here we be going go back again. up though. Then we got fish, just up there. This is 115. <laughs> yeah, you were. <laughs> that was a good one. Well, I mean, that was a good one. Could just be a small. It might be a dip, huh? Yeah, just a small little dip. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. Oh, multi beam. No. It happens. Wow. Massive boulder. I feel like we've been seeing a lot. I know. And there's Christ of Gorgeous on it. Boop. Oh. Boop. Yep. They got the high ground. I'm just taking advantage for the moment I'm able to recognize them until we don't see them anymore, and then I'll forget what they are. Mm hmm. So earlier, Hannah, you mentioned rock o'clock. Can you share with our viewers who maybe don't know what that is? Yeah. What is that? Rock o'clock is um, when we are going to pick up a rock sample. Mm -hmm. and There's actually two versions of rock yes. o'clock. Yes. Okay. So on watch, it's like when we're going to pick up a rock sample. And then on the ship is when we saw open the rocks and we observe and take note of what each rock contains minerals wise like today i'm pretty sure i showed miss malia i don't know if you were there tori or not mm -hmm. were you there mike yeah. yeah 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 that was cool so we opened wait is that another abelicea right there in the middle left you can see it barely see that line oh no so left keep going directly down from there what where i think I it's a sand blind. i don't see any biology I, I thought i saw one Oh no, it's just geology looking like kind of like the shape. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I was like, I'm I just see looking at rocks. rock and sediment. <laughs> There's the shadows. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. What do we need detail on, uh, Asako? Oh, the sponge that she was, we were looking at just a few oh, did we get it? Ago. Yeah, we got a okay. picture of it. Okay. But, um, yeah, so today in our rocks, we had a lot of high high Hyoloclastics. So that's basically when we opened it up, it was bre brecciated rocks that were lithified together and then covered with manganese crust. There's actually one that had a very, very thick manganese crust. I don't know if y'all saw that one. I saw that one. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Val was like, that's definitely an old rock. It's definitely probably from the Cretaceous, which is exactly what we're looking for. And we're hoping to use some of that rock, hopefully, for getting uh, determining an age on it. Probably, we'll be able to see what type of minerals are there under the microscope or in thin section, and just hoping that they aren't as altered as as they could be. Right. And um, so yeah, so we had a great olivine basalt that had clinopyroxenes and amphiboles. So the reason why we look at these minerals is because for the dating method that I use, that we use is called argon-argon um, dating. And it's basically looking at argon-39, argon-40 isotopes. Isotopes. And Basically, the potassium that's in these amphiboles, plagioclase, and clinopyroxenes will turn into, well, they're the parent isotopes, 
And then the daughter isotopes are the argon-39 and argon-40. So we'll send these samples off to get, pre like, get pre prepared for their age determination. So what I did, I had a lot of different steps that I had to go through to prepare my rocks for the mass spectrometer. I had to saw them, like what y'all are seeing on during rock o'clock, but also I had to saw them for thin sections. Mm -hmm. And then I had to saw them for pucks. So just like 50, 50 grams worth of a, like a cube of so rock. Many. And then ship that out to get chemical analysis on it. And to get stuff like silica content and iron or any of the... It's like bulk okay. chemistry. Yeah, bulk chemistry and also trace elements because trace elements are very important Bridge, too. Nav. I actually, I actually like uh, element concentration data better than isotope data. Please do a ship move, just 20 meters at bearing yeah. 155. Well, Val's going to do the, the isotope Thank you. data. Yeah, 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 cool. Coming out. Because she's, what, is, what do they call her? Isotope queen or Dr. Isotope? <laughs> I, I heard them like yeah, give her Dr. a Isotope, Di I believe. Dr. Doctor. Isotope, That sounds yes. like a villain. Yes. Wow. Well, she's not a villain. She's no, I know. very kind. I know. I know, I know. But I just want to make sure. <laughs> it does sound like that, though. Dr. Isotope. Dr. Isotope. So she's going to look at the isotopes of it. And yeah, so we're. I'm going to get the bulk elements and then trace elements. And so another thing that I did was sonicate. And that's basically putting these pucks, mm -hmm. the pucks that we send for that chemical analysis, we put it in water. In, in a, a beaker, we put it in water in a beaker, we put it in this like metal tub mm -hmm. and you turn it on and it it's just loud it. and it just shakes it and it's so loud and you can see all the clay and stuff that are in these rocks just like coming out in like powder form and we had to do that probably three times, 20 minute increments to get it fully cleaned. Oh wow. But that's not it for cleaning. <laughs> that's that because then after we we crush them up for the for the crusher, and then I sift them between 212.212 microns to 0.425 microns. So I target the minerals in those sizes because those are what are used for the mass spectrometer. And so then once I have those minerals, I have to sonicate them again. And then once I, I have to do it three times, mm -hmm. again, 20 minutes. And then I take those and I go to the magnetic separator. And basically in the magnetic separator is, I'm targeting the plagioclase, the amphiboles. And well, I was looking at plagioclase and amphiboles. So the magnetic separator, you turn it on to a different like magnetic charge. So I was at, to get amphiboles, I would put it at 0 0.2. Mm -hmm. And then to get my plagioclase separated, I'd put it at 0 0.8. And so I was able to have high concentrations of those, which would be super easy for to for me to hand pick through them, mm -hmm. which, I talk, which I kind of had talked about before. But so after I'm done magnetically separating them, then I send them, then we go leach them and we leach them in HCl and HNO3. And the reason why we leach them is because we want to get rid of that alteration that we talk about, mm -hmm. and we need to get them as clean as possible. And after we leach them, we then, oh, we leach them with HCl and HNO3 are acids. So yeah, that's hydrochlor I forgot, yeah. hydrochloric and nitric acid. Yes. That's a good job. And so then after is when I have like a, a tiny little vial and I, like I've talked about before, I have like a paintbrush and I use one single strand to like grab those, grab, take out the like altered plagioclase, altered amphiboles. And usually the amphiboles, they have, so my, the amphiboles, because I've showed y'all mm -hmm. all them, so they're like long and black, right? And if they're altered, they have white on it. Mm. And the opposite is with the plagioclase. The plagioclase is usually like clear, transparent, and it has black, like like a it looks like a black head on it. Right. Let's well, so we look at like this anemone. Can we look at this coral up here on the rock? 
please. But um, yeah, so I take all that out and then you, we do some origami with uh, with tin foil. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. We do t like origami with tin foil, aluminum foil and copper foil. And we make, we put like our tiny sample into like this little origami disc that we make. And then we put them all in a vial. And I have pictures of all of this too. I would put it all in a vial, and then it's ready for the mass spec. Oh, I, I mean the coral to the left, not the crescent that... but there's a white coral <laughs> that was branching. You, you might be able to uh, do like a blog post about that if you have photos. Right there. Oh, the yeah. Website. Big rock. Oh, yeah. And, um, Talk to Megan about that. Literally, so that's an example of what happens to these rocks after we get them. Yeah. Thank you. Literally, all, that, that is what we will do to get an age from these rocks. How so, long? Oh, sorry, go ahead. How long were you in there today? That sounds like a long process. Oh, that's that's, that's not here. done here. Okay. That's done in so a lab. So how much of that was done here today? Just collecting the rock. And just just it opening it up and cutting it in Okay. <laughs> because, um, yeah, just like, but we also do petrological mm -hmm. descriptions, which are really helpful because if they, if I'm looking at like the per wow, pet pure white. Oh my gosh. Because if I'm looking, so... See. Can I see the base, please? I'll, I'll wait to explain. <laughs> Sorry. I'll wait. To, sorry. No, it's okay. I don't see... Do you guys see any banding? At least see some dark yeah, spots. Yeah, I see banding. Maybe. Or the I, shadow. I can't see it. Could be shadow. Um, Asako, Chris, any ideas? And... Uh, Sebastian, so Chris said the, a minute ago that the stock sponge was a... Caliphicus. Caliphicus, yeah. Yep, Caliphicus, got it. That's right. cool. noted it. Yeah. Thank you, though. It's a gorgeous coral. Asako's typing. Is gorgeous? Oh, Asako just saying hi, Chris. Um, just give them a second. Ramulagorgia militaris, according to Asako. That's one I haven't heard before. Yeah. Me either. Oh, it's a militarized one. They're <laughs> gonna they're gonna invade. Chris is typing too. It's a type of Chrysogorgid. Huh. Wow. Any pos do we think we need to sample this at all or do you think we're good guys? Well, isn't it just the first one we've seen? Yeah, but if it's like extremely novel, we technically can't take it. But I don't think it's extremely novel. They're not super commenting about it. We can go ahead and move on, I think. But if we see that sponge again, uh, we should try and get a close up on it. Yep. I wouldn't want to take a sample of a militarized coral anyway. Too violent. Bridge nav. Please do a ship move two zero meters at bearing one nine five. So where did I, I forgot where I left off? Oh, the vial, and then I'm trying to get over more to the right. After yep. the <laughs> I, uh, I'm putting this. No, no, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, like you had your vial of uh, of, yeah, of amphibols. Yeah. And yes, stuff. Yeah. yes, vial of amphibols and plagiocles. So then we put that through the mass spectrometer and. That is located at University of, of Nevada, Las Vegas. So yeah, that's really what we, it's a lot of steps that I just talked about, but I did it over a like four month span, four to five month span I did all of it. So it was really fun. Like I would do it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will do it again. I yeah, think. yeah, I will do it again, but I, the good, the main, the main takeaway is that I had fun doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So we are about half, we're almost, we're on our way to waypoint three. Uh, this, uh, when we talk about waypoints, um, we, they were designed along, so th this seamount uh, is kind of in a cross shape. And so th this uh, transect that's gonna be this 20, the 24 hours or so of this dive uh, was designed along one ridge line of the four points of this so we're, we're moving up from the from the deeper areas up towards the summit uh, along the ridge line and these waypoints are kind of spaced across those um, there's some slumps in between that are like uh, what we call uh, saddles 
but we're going along the, the rise of this ridge um, and seeing what uh, what the geology looks like as well as what uh, organisms are growing on, on these rocks. Seeing a lot of current, I think, and, and I think some of the fallen over sponges are a result of that. Ooh, you know the um, that kind of like green coloration that we saw on yeah. some of the manganese crust? Well, we had a rock sample that had it and we cut it open today, but last night when I was picking it up and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the green thing. And I was feeling it and it was, it was biological. Change oh, cool. Huh, like a, well, I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, I don't know. Bacteria maybe? Yeah, it must be because I like, I was rubbing it and it, and it just yeah. came right off. Huh. So Hannah, I have a question for you. When you folks are working with the rock samples and you're doing that kind of analysis, is the entire sample used? Or yes. are there, so the entire sample is yes. used? For me, yes, because I made mistakes. So during the crusher, there's like this little tray that it all like ac like accumulates, like comes on. And I would forget to put the, the thing underneath the crusher to collect everything. So it just like would, would just, it would just like fall to the, to the table and I couldn't use it. So yeah. Luckily, I had a lot of rock, so I was able to still make a lot of my sample. Mm. But that's a great question because uh, there, all of those steps that I just talked about, a lot of the rock goes away because a lot of it is altered. Mm. So it's very important that the amount of rock we have is we use, I use all of it. So, and some of my samples were too small to even do some of that process with it. I could only do the chemical analysis. I couldn't do the age determinations for it. But luckily, all of the seamounts that we went to, besides one of them, so my samples are from the Nautilus Expedition 130, 134. Mm -hmm. And so literally every single seamount, besides like a few of them, I have ages for. Well, no, I don't have ages for it. But I submitted like samples to hopefully get an age for them. Okay, and so that's why I'm curious because we are permitted to take only a certain size. I think this size is a bath mm -hmm. and then rock. some kind of dead sponge up in the right. So I'm I'm curious as to whether that entire because usually they're like grapefruit size, mm -hmm. um, you know that kind of size. So just wondering if the entire um, sample was being utilized. Yes, yes, except. There were some that I had a lot of, and I was like, well, I guess I can, I'm not gonna do all of it because I got enough. I don't Those know. Those are the dead sponges yeah. I was mentioning. They look like Those the Faraday sp yeah. dead sponges, really large There's ones. There's more back here. Yeah. Are we looking at the base of them, or is this, uh, this is sponges the, that fell over? I believe over? this is the front. We saw a full one that was kind of intact and wow. a fan shape, but these are a lot bigger. These are huge, or were huge. Dead Faraday. But that was a great question, Miss Malia. So yes, I I used all of it, except for like maybe three. Also, Mike, um, update on the middle terrace name. It, Chris says it was chosen because the polyps line up on the branches like soldiers in the marching line. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Oh, is this a possibly living? Oh, this might be what was the original stock of it, and it fell over. Oh, so there's another coral. Mm -hmm. So we have our lasers that are 10 centimeters apart and on that sponge i feel like i saw some like bright um, i don't know something yeah, that was something like reflecting. Was reflecting off of it can we get a yeah. zoom on the coral does that look like is that a coral sticking out the side as primnoid or is that just a very large crinoid uh, it's not a crinoid i think it's a primnoid just weirdly on the side there's another large um peduncle of a sponge out there in the back yeah laying down I got for another 20. That's incredible. Uh, whatever they were. I think this is 
so. Paragorgia. With a primnoid on the side. Whoa. The hemicorallium uh, to like the smaller ones. Baby squad. Can, can we zoom in on this, please? Sure. I'll stay by on my ship, right? Did you copy that? Video. Bridge, Cheryl, you hold position, please. Yep, we'll get that zoom for you. Yeah, definitely leading Paragorgias is a big one. The smaller ones are Hemicorallium. What's the long white one? Primnoid. Oh. We saw one earlier. That's that's a coral though, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Then I think I've seen another anemone on the Paragorgia. Which one do you want to zoom in on, Mike? Um, is there one in particular you want to zoom in on, Sebastian? Um, I kind of want to see this darker red one on the left, this if possible. One. Right. White Galthead. Oh, I think it may have gotten those switched. Um, the small ones might be Paragorgias. The big one might be a Hemigrallium. Oh, okay. I didn't come for that. Let's still zooming in on this guy. Go ahead, video. Right, thank you, Asako and Chris. And then, um, where are these guys on the rock? Are those new recruits of Hemicar of not Hemicar of Paragorgia? That would be kind of cool if it was, right? Maybe. Create a colony over there. Are you good there, Science? I think you're yep. muted here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I said, right this morning, I said, they're Ohana, they're yeah, family. Yeah, totally. Like when you think of um, shallow water corals, like they, they kind of help and spread the food amongst themselves. So they work as a family, like mm -hmm. an Ohana. I'm curious as if these as, do that as yes, well. Yes, the big one is Hemicorallium, Chris. I got those switched. Sorry. Oh no, we were just talking about Ohana <laughs> and how the corals kind of have fam, like it looks like they're a family. Yes, they do. And then there's another, there's so many large dead sponges here. The sponges died off, so the corals took their place. Long I'm just, I'm just kidding. I don't know any, I don't know anything about a biology. The dark wall. But that brings up a good question regarding relationships. You know, when you understand, like, are certain organisms that are very different um, contributing to each other's growth? Mm -hmm. So that would be kind of a cool thing to look at the different relationships among all of these organisms. And then look at why are these sponges all dying off? Yeah. And you think since their stalks are really, really tall that they would at least get something. Those are insanely tall sponges. Yeah. It's just really surprising to me that they can stand up in the current. Mm -hmm. they, they must have some sort of really strong root system or like not root, like anchoring system. Can you I mean. zoom on the orange? Um, I think Chris is behind. We're looking at the orange one. I think we already zoomed in on it. What, this? I think he was referring to the darker coral we saw on the rocks earlier that we zoomed in already. I'm not sure. 
or maybe this orange bush right here, which is a Chrysogorge. Yeah, can you zoom in on these guys? Yeah, just be safe. Sure. Uh, um, he said. Yeah, the orange one, yeah. So, orange Chrysogorge. And okay, we should make. I think this is a paragorgia. Okay. Looks like the uh, brittle star is trying to hold it together, like Spider Man in the train. <laughs> the way that my mind thought the exact same thing, <laughs> <laughs> literally the exact same thing. All right. It's like, oh, I can't hold on anymore. There is an associate in the Chrysogorgia. I think it's a squat. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. No worries. Thanks. Couple Anthemastus. And this is another Calophycus. Do we need a, a zoom on the Calophycus, Chris? I know Asaka was mentioning it earlier. Yes, zoom on the, the sponge, please. All right. It looks like a flower. Mm -hmm. Wait, what's the Hawaiian word for flower? Pua. 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 Oh, bring your head to the right wow. So that's for just me. a general term because there's so many different yeah. types. Sebastian, can you walk us through how you are identifying like these sponges, these corals, like what's helping you make these IDs? Um, for the sponges like this one, um, I usually call it a bolosomid, which is kind of like a broader classification for glass sponges, where they have something called a peduncle, which is this large stalk that's holding it up in the water column. Um, there, for sponges, not for sponges, for corals, it really depends on the coloration, the, cha the shape of the fans, and the polyps themselves, whether or not they have multiples of eight or six. Um, oh my God. Wow, very pretty look. Um, and like, I'm looking for particular features like internodal, like changes and like where the polyps are placed on the corals, etc. There's a lot of it. That is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And Chris is correcting me, okay. that is a no calophycus. Thanks, Gina, that's a good zoom. You mean Osaka? Oh, Osaka, sorry, not Chris. We have a lot of messages coming in at all times. Yes. <laughs> Love our science, for sure. Osaka's uh, symbol is always orange, though, and Chris's is always gray. That's how I keep it straight. That's, and that's just randomly assigned when we log in. I think mine's green. Purple. Purple. So yeah, we have a viewer wondering about how many people are like working together simultaneously. Like we've got how people in the three? control van right now, nine. nine of us. Nine, yeah. And then we also have scientists ashore that contribute. Um, and we also have other folks around the ship. So we probably have people, maybe not right now because it's dinner time, but during the <laughs> lounge sometimes we'll have someone call in and help us out? Yeah, it's without a doubt a team effort. So we have our watch. We currently have uh, uh, our guests from the 12 to 4 watch for dinner relief. So that expands the, the footprint. And then we have, yeah, people down the lounge. So we may ask uh, Dr. Val or Virginia for, for assistance or Upashna for assistance with uh, IDs or what to sample. Um, then we have a, a massive team, uh, scientists ashore. I think there's over 100. Of, and any of them can be signed in at any given time. Um, you know, that's why we send out dive plans. So 
if it's an area of particular interest, these scientists can jump on. We had a different team um, for our, our, di our dives on the Midway shipwrecks. Um, we had a bunch of participation from uh, the NOAA Command Center uh, in Silver Spring, Maryland, where uh, Dr. Jim Delgado and a, a, a team from um, all, all over the place, NOAA, uh, the Navy, DPAA, um, and, and others uh, were participating as well. You know, and there was there was crossover with some of our biologists and geological scientists um, as well on those dives. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a it's very much a team effort, which was uh, you know what Dr. Ballard envisioned with the Doctors on Call program uh, early in the early days of Nautilus that has really blossomed uh, and, and and seen a lot of a lot of consistent participants as well as a lot of new uh, fresh faces coming in every year. Okay, I'm seeing Metallogorgia, I think. Or is that one of those, another one of those orange chrysogorgids? What is this guy right here, the big guy on the left? I'm leaning paragorgia because it looks like it's more flexible. And Mike, are scientists ashore, do they typically help out with like one expedition at a time or like the entire back. expedition nice. season? It depends. Uh, it depends. So we p uh, people can sign up for updates for specific uh, legs. So this is NA154, uh, or they can sign up for all the legs, or just choo pick and choose. So if, you know, if we're working in an area right now, it's the Hawaiian Seamount chain. You know, they people may be interested in just that, but they also may be just interested in Pacific deepwater corals. And in that mm -hmm. case, they're going to sign up for updates on everything that that happens. So it really right. it's up to them when they sign up to be a scientist ashore and a doctor on call. And to add on to that, um, another really important um, component of this expedition is in the weaving in of indigenous knowledge. Um, because we are in an indigenous space, we are in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument, which is considered to be the Aina Akua. This is the realm of the gods, of the ancestors, of our deities. Um, this is where um, our creation story, the Kumulipo, um, shows us or reveals to us the creation of the Hawaiian universe. And um, that creation That's began me. in the Lipo Lipo um, with the birth of the coral polyp. So when we look at corals, we look at our ancestors, our oldest ancestor, and that genealogical connection that Kanaka or Ivi have maintained to these islands and atolls and, and um, oceans. Um, for millennia. I think that's really cool. I mean, you, you mentioned it a few times, and the, the fact that they see the coral polyps as like where life originated is, I mean, it's not like perfectly accurate, but it's actually getting there because like, you know, deep water, we think that um, life started on the planet in the, in the deep water um, and then evolved to, you know, elsewhere. So I think it, it's interesting that they develop that so early on. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's so cool. Yeah, and, and when you think of it, it's, you know, the universe from a Hawaiian perspective, so that yeah. includes the Hawaiian archipelago. Yeah. So just, you know, deep knowledge that I think a lot of indigenous um, cultures have because of that intimate Eric, uh, relationship that they maintain yeah, over generations, sometimes we, thousands of years. Is anyone this coral possible? This one here? Yes, please. I know, uh, what's his name, the guy who did the evolutionary theory? Uh, Charles Darwin. Darwin, Darwin uh, was very impressed yeah, with the uh, Oh, yeah, because oh, yeah, he went there. Yeah, yeah, he went there. Yeah, out, yeah. yeah. Um, my favorite evolutionary writer is um, Stephen Jay Gould. I don't know if anyone's read any of his stuff. Um, he was, I believe he's a professor. Uh, I think he was really uh, affiliated with the... Uh, Natural History Museum in New York, but I could be wrong. Um, but his writings are just on, on evolution and just plant the the, geo, the history of our natural history of Earth is just so great. He has some really cool ones, um, like and, and just some some of his stuff are collection books are collections of essays. Um, so that that's another really good writer on, on evolution. But it, it's cool that Darwin himself was able to experience the the Hawaiians um, 
perspective on um, Chris, kind of the evolution black of coral? Yeah. I can't really yeah. tell on the colors. Um, let's see. It d I don't see the, any uh, of the it's black. A, oh, it's a crassic, it is a chrysogorget. It's just a very plainer looking one to me. Oh yeah, instead of like the bush yeah, style. Yeah, that's how I was yeah. a little confused. It is the same, a similar color. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, go on, please. Yeah, and big thanks to uh, Chris Kelly and Asako um, for a lot of their being online as much as they are and, and helping yeah. us with IDs. We're um, we're seeing a lot of the stuff for the first time. We're uh, going by relatively quickly, quickly. So we're giving kind of first impressions and ideas of, of what these could be, and and really uh, appreciate their input and uh, helping us ID things. Sometimes a lot of species can only be can't be ID down to a species uh, until you have a physical sample and can take measurements and that sort of thing or look under a microscope. So it's good to have their expert eyes to uh, to help us take a look at these. Um, Malia, I've been trying to look up. I hear the word lipo come up um, in our conversations. So that phrase specifically, lipo, I've been seeing it means like darkness. Or is that a fair description? Um, well, Hawaiian words have many meanings. Meanings. Mm -hmm. um, when it refers to the kumu lipo, it refers to that deep darkness. Okay. And you're also the deep ocean. The lipo lipo. And the, the chant itself is over 2,100 lines. Can take up to wow. six hours to chant. Jeez. And mind you, this is all <laughs> transmitted yeah, orally yeah. for generations and generations. That's amazing. It's kind of like the, uh, the Iliad and the Odyssey were were spoken for a long time before yeah. they were written down. So the original supercomputers, a human brain. Oh yeah, for sure. Mm. I think memorization is one of the skills that we've lost as a, you know, because we have access to writing implements and computers and stuff, we you know we don't, I mean, I can, I feel like I can barely remember anything anymore, let alone a, a, like six, phone a numbers. six hour. Let's yeah, we don't, phone this, we we don't, yeah, we don't remember those anymore. Phone numbers anymore. The, the one phone number I knew from my parents was their landline and they got rid of it. <laughs> I still remember my landline when I was a kid. Yeah, growing up. yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, I can't, I can't imagine remembering uh, a chant or a poem that t would take six hours to yeah. recite. That's just, I remember trying to memorize little bits of Latin in our in Latin class in high school and I could, could barely do that it's a uh, it's just an amazing skill that you know we don't really have anymore there seem to be a lot of these planar chrysogorgids which is really throwing me off <laughs> but it's really cool at the same time you got this Sebastian you're doing amazing Kupaya Naha. Yeah. Thank you. Wow, look at all these small grains. Yeah, it's like a gravel almost. This must be like a saddle or something. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, hello. hello. We've got some dinner changes coming up. Oh. We've already had a few. We may have a, sec a third opinion here in a second. Know anything about planar chrysogorgids? We're seeing a lot of them. We have Upsana entering the chat. <laughs> Those are uh, possible uh, scoop. They're a little small for uh, nodules, in my opinion. Typically, they're going to go for something a little bit more 
larger, I think, unless uh, Val magically appears in the chat. People pay a lot of money to have that kind of paving in their um, yards. That very pretty little pebbly. Yeah, especially like around like ponds and whatnot. And here we have it all natural. Another sponge peduncle. Sponge bees. Sorry, I'm just a uh, seepen biologist. I'm very possessive about the word peduncle. Ah, okay. <laughs> so see these orange ones? These ones are the plainer ones we're being Yeah, these are the chrysogorgias for sure. I don't know what kind of chrysogorgias. Uh, and then we have, uh, yeah, heavy coral. Uh, will it be possible to have a quick zoom on the heavy coral, please? Uh, you have to circle which one you want to zoom. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. This yeah, one. the big pink guy. And it looks like there's a primnoid underneath them as mm -hmm. well, which is weird because I, every time I've seen a large hemichorallium, this one, there's been a primnoid literally right next to it. Relationships. Maybe. And yes. You see a nice mushroom coral in the background. All right, I'm disappearing for dinner. I'll be back in 30. Yeah, I yeah. This also this kind of looks like a paragorgia to me as well. So, which one? The big one. The big one. one. Uh, yeah, that's why I was also like, let's have a closer look at it. And I'm always confused between the corallium, heavy corallium, and the paragorgia from a distance. Uh, quick plan zoom there for us. Oh, and it's full of ophuroids. That's good, thanks. Hey there. Okay, go wide. I'm going to hand it back over to Master Jake Bonnie here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, we are... Ooh. It looks like there's a black coral to the side. Here. A couple of... Antomasters, pseudo antomasters, mushroom corals in the center.
the mushroom corals are those deep red colored ones? Yes. Yeah? Yes. No, no ship move. I don't know. Yeah, we can just wait around. Uh, can we have a quick zoom on the black coral, which is on the, in the corner? This one. Yeah, so this looks like a bad black coral. I'm not sure Could about the genus. Probably of our antibodies. Uh, but I'm not great with iodine black coral. Uh, except for the batibatis, tigopatis, and probably the obvious morphologies. But it kind of looks like a bad antibodies to me. Uh, but I would love to hear more from the science staff and get a better idea on this. Thank you so much. Coming out. Bridge nav. Could please do a ship move two zero meters bearing one three five. Thank you. I don't. I'm not great when it comes to black coral ID. There's a small primnoid fan in the center and then we see quite a large stalked uh, sponge in the background. Yeah, this looks like uh, another colophagus sponge. Uh, that would be a rosellid stock sponge. Yes, parentipathies or lilipathies, yes. Yes, uh, so yeah, so Asak was also saying that this was uh, the black coral was panantipathies and lilipathies and this is the same confusion that we had yesterday with the black coral during our watch on the last uh, uh, sea mound where we saw a black coral colony very similar to the one we currently saw and we could not we we had also uh, I did it down to a panantipathies or a lilipathies but we were unable to decide on the decide on which would be the correct genus ID. That stalk is almost comically long. Yeah. <laughs> With a tiny, tiny yeah. <laughs> head on the top. I didn't actually expect it to be this tall. And we have a nice view of the back of the sponge, which uh, tells us that it is definitely a rosellid, given the point of attachment of the stalk to the sponge. And there's another stock sponge in the background.
bridge now. I'll stop oh, these. Oh, that doesn't have a head. Thank oh. You. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, which one? The small one on the rock. Sorry, yeah, we... I think we lost it. So, there was a small whitish colony that we had zoomed over. Which, uh, Sako ID'd as... Ramuligorgia, which is a kind of a chrysogorgid. And that's the first time that I'm seeing it. Yeah, it was a polyopagon. There was a polyopagon. I uh, got a glimpse of it. There's another one of the Chrysogorgias with a mushroom coral. <coughs> Now. Please, <clears throat> please do a ship move zero two zero meters, bearing one three five at zero point two knots. Thank you. Mm. That's another. Wow. Is that another sponge stock? Yeah, wow. that's what it looks like. Oh, I just realized the back row is almost. Oh, the back row is. <laughs> we're just 12 to. <laughs> we're just missing Hans. <laughs> yeah, I had not noticed. I was just staring at the screens and looking up <laughs> things. Oh, it's also like toppled over. Yeah, and there's a small. I think a bol Yeah, that's a ball somewhere in the corner. I think we have a small hemichorallium, maybe, again, some of the chrysogorgids. The hemi is the pink one there? Yeah. So I know that we said the difference between the hemichorallium and the paragorgia is the, like, the rigidity yeah is there any other like clues that we can use to sort of differentiate or it's usually that one yeah so the rigidity or the flexibility and uh, the polyp arrangement if i'm not very wrong paragorgias have uh, uh, multiple uh, polyps like polyps rising around the stalk and also like at the tip there are multiple polyps whereas hemichorallium and corallium will have just two uh, i am still uh, this is something that i i got to know about recently and i'm still testing that okay. in a sense that i'm uh, i'm using this now to differentiate between these uh, let's see so okay. i'm not sure if this is universally applicable or i mean i have to talk to somebody who uh, and if somebody in the chat can also confirm what I just said. Uh, but this is just like, you know, from seeing things, you come up with little differences. <laughs> yeah. and because I haven't had the time to go back and look at the original descriptions for these. Uh, and also I can ask my advisor, Dr. Scott Franz, once I get back. Hmm. All those questions are in my notebook. <laughs> <laughs> the Upasana hypothesis. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's like, uh, yeah. So let's see. Yeah, uh, that's that looks like a metallogorgia. Yeah. 
And for our viewers, just um, a note, uh, we have our scientists on board, the EV Nautilus, but we also have a whole team of scientists ashore that are helping um, to also ID creatures, um, make suggestions for zooms. So it is a very collaborative effort and definitely always uh, in constant communication. Yeah. So thank you to our uh, team on shore. That's interesting. So uh, there was a dis there's a discussion going on in the science chat that why do we see the uh, stalks of dead sponges but not the dead heads? Uh, so Christopher Carey here explains that stalks are essentially really long spicules that hold together well. The body of these uh, sponges have lots of tiny spicules that cause it to fall apart when it dies or or is knocked off. Oh, interesting. I wasn't even thinking about that. The yeah, missing. that is interesting. I didn't know that there were single spicules. Oh. That is so cool. Okay, so I'm going to hand it over back to Hannah, who's back from uh, her dinner. For that, I just want to keep a note of some... Rich now. Thank you so much, everybody. Can you please track a line bearing mm. 135? Thank you, Pashina. Moving at 0 0.2 knots. <laughs> Thank you. And... For any viewers who are wondering what spicules are, um, Upashana was just talking about sponges and um, the spicules inside them. And basically, sponges are invertebrates, so uh, they they don't have a spine, um, and they instead form their structure uh, through these tiny, 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 mm -hmm. like almost shards of glass called spicules. They're made of uh, silicon dioxide, and they also have other things like spongin proteins that help them give them their structure as well. Um, but these spicules, uh, you would have to see them under a microscope. Sometimes they have different shapes, like different spiky looking shapes. Some of them almost look like what anchors. Some of them oh, look like shards. So they're pretty cool to see. If you want to look up sponge spicules on Google Images, um, definitely some interesting shapes there. And then Upashana was saying that um, in the science chat, they were referencing how um, the stalks were essentially really long spigules that hold together well. So um, that's why we could see the, the stalks of the sponges really well, but the heads, which have lots of tiny spigules, um, fall apart more easily. That was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I love sponges. <laughs> so glad you do, and that we see a lot of them. Yeah, and a lot of these deep sea sponges, so I'm not a deep sea biologist, I, I work in shallow waters, so it's very interesting to see these deep sea sponges and their amazing, um, like, intricate patterns compared to a lot of the shallow water sponges I work with, which are just more like fun looking blobs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you have now, like, you can have both sides. Yeah. <laughs> it's the like best Pokemon. Of both, yeah, <laughs> the best of both worlds. Gotta catch them all, all the sponges. I love that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Funny story, my brother, um, when I was, like, little, like, probably when 
iPod touches were first coming out, one of the mm-hmm. first songs that I downloaded was the Pokemon theme song <laughs> oh, <laughs> for fun. my brother, my little brother. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Just like a crab, a squat lobster. lobster. Just scaling that, <laughs> that stock. That's his Everest right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen that uh, horror movie where they're stuck on the top yes, of the... Yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> I didn't even watch it. Like, I watched the trailer and I was like, you know what, that's enough for me. I kind of get the point. They're stuck on top of a on top of a tower. And then they... I don't even know how... I, do they get down? Did you watch it? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> uh, they're also hydroids, Ooh. if I'm not mistaken, Sebastian, right? Look on this... Uh, I believe so. Growing on the sponge. I may go back and watch it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just to know if they get down or not. Just skip to the end. <laughs> Just watch the last 20 minutes. <laughs> I have done that for a few movies. <laughs> so Hannah, how would you descri- characterize um, the bottom that we're seeing now. So right now, what I'm looking at is just a lot of broken up flows. Okay. I can't really tell what type of flow, but I am seeing pillow lavas. I mean, a mixture of boulder size to probably small enough for Herc to pick up. I mean, yeah, like massive boulders. But, um, yeah, it's really hard for me to tell what type of flow. If anything, I would say pillow basalt. And if any, uh, and if it is a flow, then it would probably be broken up low bait flow. Okay. But it's really hard for me to tell. So we're just, we're just passing waypoint three now. Did you want to get a rock like in between waypoint three and four? Yes. Okay. Perfect. I feel like I have a second wave of energy after dinner. Great. Yeah, your, your energy is definitely tied to blood sugar. It's, I'm, yes, I needed food, maybe. And we have a question in the <gasps> chat that, what is this? oh, go ahead, let's zoom in. Hummus? Hummus? Let's see. Hummus? Drum roll. What are you doing? in. What are you? Yes, pumice. Oh, it is. Yay. That's cool. What's that yeah. White stuff. Yeah, I don't know oh. what the little, they look like cobwebs. Like a larva. But I know it's. Mucus. Look, look at it. It looks like some kind of mucus yeah. or webbing. Um, I'm not sure. Chris really, Kelly's really type in, so. Is it like invisible? I'm sorry. I, it just looks like a little, like an invisible something. <laughs> well, it's clearly visible. Yeah. Well, visible, but. Transparent, translucent. Yes. But it, yes. You know what I mean. You yeah, know I what do. I mean. <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> so Hannah, for the viewers, the can you kind of explain just uh, shortly how pumice is formed? Yes. So pumice is volcanic ash, and this probably came from a terrestrial volcano and not an underwater volcano, and just was carried by the currents. And then once it became waterlogged, it dropped and sank to the bottom. And if we were, Dr. Val told me one time she collected a pumice sample and when she sawed it open, just a lot of water just came out. Wow. So. Well, is it is it ash or is it, um, is it a rock that has a, just a lot of an air component or gas component? Is that not? What? Wait, is that? Is that? Uh, I've thought it was ash. Let me look it up. Thanks, Hannah. And when I say for the viewers, 
I mean me. <laughs> uh, you know what? <laughs> you are beautiful. I use that, ex uh, the, that excuse. <laughs> oh, well, thanks for asking. <laughs> You can always say we have a viewer question, but we don't know if it's in there or not. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to admit to that. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I have no idea. Content You're a of viewer, right? High content of water and gases. Frothy. Yeah, I've, I've heard of, of underwater volcanoes actually expelling I uh, imagine if rocks it that came to the surface. I assume that would be pumice. Yes, that and could because be of possible. the gas content. I'm not really saying it. There's no time for it to crystallize. I need more. <laughs> I need more. <laughs> <laughs> more information, please. I, 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 one sentence isn't cutting it for me. I need more. This powder and this volcanic rock is it's kind of the nature of trying to look up anything yeah. scientific anymore. You either get a sentence fragment or 47 full published papers behind paywalls. Really, behind the paywalls, things are so real. Yeah, it's annoying. I can't. I cannot spend $35 on a paper. Well, but you have. You should have university login. Not all, not, not all papers. Not all of them. No. Cause try, try not from Australia, I don't have... Oh. A, a school account. From. I think last I checked, UH doesn't even get Elsevier. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. That's insane. No, it's so crazy. For engineering, we have the same with a lot of IEEE papers. Can't but read them. It doesn't seem like it. maybe they don't. But that. Can publicly funded research be paywalled? There's an organism there. Let's uh, it's, it's say squat. Squat. Stop. Oh, I see him. Took me a little bit. I still think about the one we saw yesterday that was very antagonistic looking in yeah. its rock. It's giving us, staring us down head on. Oh, 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 it's oh. moving. Oh. Well, that's a squeeze little setup the right there. No predation. Well, I mean, you are shooting here. lasers at him. <laughs> well, no image today. Absent picture day. It's a great little spot to hide, though. Yeah, but these yeah. rocks. Just want to give a shout out to our viewers from Guam. I'm about to hop onto a classroom call with um, DL Perez Elementary School. So have fun exploring, guys. And All right, thanks. Have a day, everyone. Enjoy. Enjoy the live stream. Thanks, Kara. So pumice is a mixture of rock and volcanic ash. And I'm pretty sure okay. the, the rock, I think I didn't realize it was also a mixture of rock. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize it was also a mixture of ash. Yeah, so. Go team. Yeah. Um, that's what I really wanted to read. But um, yeah, I'm literally looking and somebody put a $20 bill, like, and then they put pumice oh, yeah. on a $20 bill and it stood up. <laughs> but yeah, pumice cools really, really quickly. And also, they can occur underwater, which... Oh. Well, that makes sense because there's a lot of water I wanna uh, find mix, probably yes. mixed in. I want to read this paper. I will keep looking. Thank you for the Pumice 101. I'm sorry, I, I'm still going to go down that rabbit hole right now. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> Chris says it, um, Pumice is great for scraping off dead skin from the soles of your feet. Yes, <laughs> yes. that's what his so wife true. says. <laughs> no, that's, that's actually so the first way that I heard of, I, I mean, I knew the word Pumice because of, because of that.
I wonder if the commercially available pumice is made from like natural pumice or is it somehow manufactured? Mm. I think it, I think they just collect it. I don't know. Apparently I'm reading this paper and it says underwater volcano creates huge floating islands of rock disrupts shipping. So they're saying that pumice rocks from underwater volcanoes disrupt shipping, but I need to know like this is so short. <laughs> This is it's not enough information. No, it's not enough information, and I don't like the info. I don't like how it's not a lot. And a lot of what? So five this or six years ago, Jason went and explored Lahab Volcano, which was a uh, pumice eruption that was spotted by airline pilots. Because they could see the pumice floating. Yeah, it was massive amounts of it. Well, where was that at? Just like a mat on the. Sea oh, surface. five days north of New Zealand. So oh, cool. halfway here. Yeah. Yeah. Le Havre, H-A-V-R-E. We picked up a uh, piece of pumice that was bigger than Jason's basket. Which wow. Oh, wow. I think it's in the lobby of Clark Building at Huey these days. Um, we didn't just see a large dead ferret right now, did we? Ferret dead sponge? Seal. We did a few minutes ago. A few minutes ago, okay. Chris is just commenting it right now. You might have a delay in the stream. Pro yeah, probably. So I actually don't trust what that um person said about pumice being an issue i think they were talk they were referring to this place in new zealand called like pumice island i think they were just talking about oh, that in the front sorry row. sorry i zoned i was reading huh the, I something i just heard them saying something about pumice in new zealand yeah uh, there's a place there that it's the pumice huh. disrupts the ocean like even the the planktons that live there, it blocks sunlight, so it kills, oh. yeah, so it kills organisms oh, no. on Pumice Island that I didn't know existed. I would think if you had an underwater eruption that expelled a lot of gas, it could absolutely affect the buoyancy of a vessel at the surface. Yeah, that's true. The buoyancy of the what? Of oh. a boat. Oh, oh, okay. See Sorry, that? I didn't hear you. If if the boat is in not just water, but a mixture of water and gas, mm. then the so displacement math doesn't work. So would the boat ride lower or higher? It depends on how much displacement. It would ride lower. Oh. It's displacing a certain amount of water. Right. And that's where it gets its buoyancy from. But if instead it's <coughs> surrounded by gas, uh, it would have no buoyancy. And as soon as the displacement is less than the uh, weight of the vessel, there's buoyancy is less than zero, which can be generally labeled as bad. Bad, <laughs> yeah. Long story short, bad. <laughs> Probably not so good for your water intakes on the vessel either. Yeah. Going through. Actually, the thing that seems to be hardest on vessels is when there's, uh, well, it's mainly the Gulf, those sargassum rafts block the uh, cooling inlets. <coughs> yeah, our sea chest would get clogged with them. And yeah. Lip. Oh, and Derek, I saw where you put look oh. for a rock, and that looks great. And then something else yeah. sticking off okay, the rock. Good. I didn't even see that. Keep our eyes peeled. And the white coral right there in the rocks, I think. Yes. I think it's that militaris, militaris. species. A soldier. What else have we been seeing? Is this we saw a pumice. Really? <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> a we, pumice. <laughs> we went down a pumice rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, I went down a whole pumice rabbit hole. But yeah, I imagine if, yeah, okay. Basically, one source 
that I found said that underwater volcanoes produce pumice. And then I go to the source, and then the source is literally like four paragraphs about it. And I was like, no, this is not enough for me. This is not enough for me to definitively like go with that. Because I'm like, okay, I just, it has to erupt really fast in my mind for it to, for something like that to happen, especially super fast because it's also underwater and that's affecting it too. I would just like, I wish I could see it actually happen. Like I wish I could see a massive eruption <laughs> from a seamount, like a, an underwater volcano so badly. <laughs> I wish I could go back in time mm -hmm. and watch this happen. That's what I wish. That would be cool. Yeah. I think it might pick up the pace a little bit, unless you guys feel otherwise. How fast are you going? 0.2. Yeah. I think that's fine with me. 0.2. Right now, that's what we're doing. Well, how about we pick it up after we get the rock? Okay. It is crazy too because what? Oh, that's why I didn't hear. Uh, I said corals are coming, then they appeared, but nobody heard me because I was muted. <laughs> well, Sorry, what were you gonna say? Oh, I was gonna say really interesting when we were looking, observing our rocks from our few previous seamount collections. We looked at them and we were like, wow, these look fantastic, like on the outside, you know, they look fantastic. Like we were so excited. And then a lot of them were hyoloclastites. Hyo <laughs> oh my gosh, hyoloclastites. Mixed in with It's like a tongue twister for me. Hyaloclastites. Hyaloclastites. That's fair, it's a hard one. It's, a, it's really, it's not something that it's like kupayanaha. It's really not, it's not that word. It's not. It's just China cops. China, uh, that one also is a hard <laughs> word for me. China cops. China cops. You said that when y'all opened released, the- They just released that sighting as a highlight too. I have to go back and see if you're saying it in there or not. Oh, I think, I think I saw a highlight of, it was our watch. It was yeah. me being like, I really, really, really want to see a Chonicops, yes. but it wasn't. Oh. <laughs> it was the, I think it was the batfish yes. one that we saw? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Hannah, I was about to ask. Um, you said you opened the rocks and you saw the hyola class size. Yes. And what does that mean? Is that a sign of alteration? So this is a brecciated of broken fragments of rocks that was formed from the eruption and then lithified together. So, and it is, so that's why it's a mixture between a sedimentary and a igneous rock. And when we open them, it's just, there's, it's not really, you can't really see any minerals. And also a lot of them are carbonates, which is like not useful for our studies, but it might be useful to, for somebody else. Mm -hmm. So when you open up a basalt, you expect to see more darker shades. You're expecting to see like dark gray, like just dark. And with these hyoloclastites, Oh, you s a Bellicea, <laughs> number six. You see, um, you see, like we saw pale yellow and pale orange, pale green, um, just really not dark colors. And I don't know if the one that we showed you guys today that we opened up and it had the amphibols in it and the CPX clinopyroxenes, it was in a dark gray matrix. Uh, when I say matrix, I mean cemented together, held together like the rock, like, like 
the rock that holds the phenocris of the minerals together. Yeah, like the rest of the rock. Yes. Yeah. Um, I forget I was going to ask something. That's okay. I forget. <laughs> It'll come back. Probably not. Was it about the pale colors? No. Nah. No? I don't remember. <laughs> but Cucumber. Oh, I do remember. It came back. Uh, breccia is o has always been a, a, a term that I've never understood in geology. Really? No. It's basically like a ton of grains that are various sizes and they're angular so that's versus like a conglomerate where they're all rounded no actually i don't <laughs> want to say that i don't want to say that i want to make sure before no. i well i ha i like think but i want to like double check myself okay. whenever i hear the word breccia i always think of um what's that bread focaccia bread focaccia. that's what i think of too yeah focaccia great bread virginia <laughs> great bread. virginia can bake that bread I heard. And it sounds fantastic. Okay, yes. Okay, I'm correct. <laughs> yes. So, breccias are more angular class, and conglomerates are more rounded and consol. Well, yeah, rounded. Yeah, that makes sense. Breccia. But just understanding that it is like a volcanic conglomerate. Breccia. Conglomerate yes. makes sense to me. I know. Well, it's a vol. Yeah. A, it's volcanically created conglomerate without the rounding of sedimentary rocks. It's just breccia. Oh, that's a large <laughs> it's pumice. Breccia. It's just breccia. Large pumice. What you described. Just Anna, look. Is I that a pumice? See. Yes. Mm. Yes. Pumice watch. Pumice. Pumice. I should, you know what? I should start making a count. I need to do that. Is so that it's so two? much fun. It's a puffy No, flat. I've seen like three so far. Oh. It's a puffy flat bread with herbs on top. It's just focaccia. Just focaccia. <laughs> um, um, I'm writing. Rock fragments and broken flows. Wow. We should be able to find a rock <laughs> easily. I say that and then we're gonna do it and then it's gonna be stuck. Sebastian, how many of those sea pens that we were counting earlier did we end up seeing? We are at now seven, the one in front of us. There's one in front of us? Yeah, oh. right there in the corner. Oh, yeah. Bridge nav. The umbrella. So we're getting there. Bridge nav. And that, I believe, is a Bathy Pathies, the orange one. Bathy Pathies? That I love is that. so cute. I love that. Name. I love that. Bathy Pathies. Bathy Pathies. <laughs> it's, it almost sounds like. It's my favorite. Like a rhyme for like taking a bath. Bathy Pathies. <laughs> You can make a, like a, a song out of that. Yeah. I'm not going to try. It sounds like a Dr. Seuss phrase. Right, Yeah. Pathy, pathy. Pathy, pathy. Pathipathus. <laughs> With the yeah, how Romans would say it.
I like the tip of this. Yeah. Is that, I probably spelled it wrong. Um, no Y in Pathies, it's E-S. No Y in uh, Pathies. I like how you spelled it better. It makes more sense. Oh, it's just a C pen? Well, it looks like a C pen. It's actually oh. a coral, but it has the oh. arrangement oh. of its polyps kind of C pen -ish. Yeah, that's going to complicate. Well, see, they're normally on rocks, so it's oh, easier to differentiate. Oh, it's it's those weird rock pens that um, type of black we talented earlier. Mm. A type of black coral. <laughs> Which accent was that? Oh, that was a horrible British all right. accent. Good night, Chris. Thanks for all the help. Night. Oh, finally, another a low bait. <laughs> Can we get a zoom in on this yellow guy? I think it's just a sponge of hydroids, but I want to double check. Yeah, sponge of hydrides. Huh. Is that sponge still alive? Um, I'm guessing it's dead. Okay. Looks to be dead to me. And then we got chrysogorgids on the wall. I think there's uh, maybe a brachiopod on it. Oh, and then what is this guy on the left? The small. This one? Yeah, and then there's these yellow sticking out of the wall as well. Can little we get, yellow Do you strip. want zooms on them? Um, yes, please. White and then yellow. Yes. Please. I don't see any polyps. Is it possibly a Chrys... Oh, it might be this Chrysogorgid without all of its polyps and branches, maybe. What is this? Huh? Huh? That. The white? Yeah. That's just like a base of coral, I think. Oh, okay. And then I see some barnacles on it. Weird. All right, we can zoom out and go down to that white one to the right. Uh, this one. The military? Mo I'm sorry, militaris. Militaris. Mil militaris. Militaris. Oh, that's that's probably it. The militarized mm -hmm. corals that are going to take over the world. Did you want to zoom on that white one? Or yes, please. You copy that pilot. What was it? They were looking for a zoom on that white one, bottom of the frame. Oh, yeah. Um, it's fine. We know what it is. We, if we were ready, okay. we moved too far. Never mind. I was looking to get back underneath the... Thank you, guys. The yes. I'm glad I can go back and look. Militaris. Um, a fun fact about that white Militaris is that it's called Militaris because the polyps look like they lined up with soldiers. Like soldiers. Oh, hi Tina. I didn't see you chat in.
What are you talking to Tina for? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. No, she's Tina one. If we had three more, she'd be Tina four. <laughs> is that, what is that? Is that some bet well, more that dead sponge? That was a bad joke. Dead sponge. Yes. Looks like a dead Califica. And what is this red guy right here? Is this another Bathy Pathies? Can we get a zoom, please? Yes, these are, I think these are path pathies. Yes. Thank you. No need for a zoom. Looks like we're getting that tall sponge. Yeah. The cala the CH one? <laughs> Calificus? Yes. I think so. You said Calificus? Yeah. C A U L O five one second. I had to spell myself. No, you're fine. <laughs> um I think it's C A U L O P H P H U C U S. Let's see. Let's see if you're correct. Yeah, definitely. Calificus. Cal Please do 25 meters at bearing 220. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Amazing. These guys grow pretty tall. Yeah. Wonder if we're able to get the um, lasers on the stem in a way that would give us an accurate uh, measurement? I don't think so. All right, just checking. I, there, there's really no way to turn the ROV that would turn the lasers. In a way like that would get that orientation. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll find one that is like horizontal. Yeah, if we find one laying down, we could. We saw one earlier. Yeah. We'll have to keep our eyes out. On the beach. Kind of nice if we had a third laser that was horizontal to one of those. Like a triangle? Or like, you know what I mean? Vertical directly below it. Yeah. Thank you. Would that be okay. an isosceles triangle? Actually, Overhang with Christ Gorgia. If you were shooting three lasers in an isosceles triangle and you're shooting like Okay, can we zoom in on that orange one, please? Is that, yeah, that one looks different. That was off axis to the camera. Could you back out and determine what the axis was from the distance between the dots? And the geometry I wish I could majors climb here. That Same. I was thinking I that earlier. I wish I could climb it. <laughs> and just sit on right, top. Zoom. Zoomage. That if we had that sort of laser you're talking about, we'd just be the predator. <laughs> but I'm just talking about th a third dot. Black coral. I would agree, black coral. Woohoo! Nice. Orange is the new black coral. <laughs> That's a good one too. <laughs> Are we looking at a low bait flow, Hannah? Um, I can't tell because this just looks like a large, a large, a large boulder. Rock. It looks like a large boulder. It's not a boulder. Covered. It's a rock. What? <laughs> You're so funny. I forgot to laugh. It's oh SpongeBob. <laughs> I get it. I I know what you were referring to. <laughs> and then this but guy right care. here is different as well. This large brown one. Yes. Look how big it is. The boulder. <laughs> See, I would love to climb to the top of it. More crazy gorgeous. You're coming home with me. <laughs> Hannah, <laughs> 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 yeah. okay, we have a viewer requesting um, a little bit of an explanation of what we mean by low bait flow. And we've been practicing, so I know yes. we've been using that word a lot today, yes. especially. So there are three different types of flows depending on velocity. There's sheet flow, which is the fastest, low bait flow, middle, 
and then, well, medium. And then the slowest is pillow lava. And some of the you low mean volcanic flows? Oh, yes, volcanic lava flows. So, and are these strictly for underwater? Yeah. Yes. So, the low bait flow that I'm talking about is like the, we were talking about yesterday too, how it's the perfect mixture between a pillow flow, a pillow lava, and a sheet flow. Because it has those like divots or like um, crevices or cracks, they're not cracks, but they're, it, the, uh, the way I always describe it is, it kind of reminds me of a brain texture and it is all solid and sometimes it's solid together. It's not like pillow and it's, it's kind of like, it's imagining. It has little humps. Yes. Yes. Imagine like if a sheet flow went on top of a pillow lava. Mm. It's like a comforter. Yes. Like it, it's like ripply. Yes. Lumpy. But it, but it lumpy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but it, it has, well, like, that's why it's called lobes. You know, it has yes. like little lobes. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it, yeah. It's like a, like if you were to cover this rock field with a blanket, yes. you would see little humps in it. Yes. And there'd be little divots between them. Yes. That's that's low bait flow, but that's not caused by sheet going over rock. It's it's because yes. the the flow is moving slower than a sheet, so it's not a single layer, but it's moving fast enough that it's not coming into like individual rocks. So it's yes. just kind of slowly moving down the mountain and solidifying as it goes. So this is about where we thought we might be looking for individual rocks. All right. Rock. Yeah, we can Amazing. take a look here. Yeah. I think there's plenty up, yeah. up to the right. I'm looking and I'm I'm seeing <laughs> the same thing. I'm looking and I'm seeing and I'm thinking. <laughs> um okay. So it's kind of cemented. So shrimp. shrimp. There's this guy that I'm seeing. And then there's Ooh, maybe this one. That one. That has I like that one. This one? Yeah. Okay, well, let's pick that one up. Hannah, your excitement for every rock o'clock and just your yes. explanations are so amazing. I'm so Aww. grateful you're in here with us. Sorry. To share all this geology knowledge. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, Tori is amazing. She is an amazing person. Sample number is 92. <laughs> Where's it going to go? Where's it She's going? She's so nice. Oh, um, <laughs> starboard is fine. Starboard, let's see, A, th A through E are available. You know, so if we could get cam port off and Bio on once boxes out, please. Is this what you said? Oh, right there? Science? Yes. Uh, I think it was the one below it, but that's okay. Yeah, that was good too. And we see yeah, that it's I mixed. mean, they're both good. So I was like, you know what? That's fine. Okay. Uh, downs. Downs. Oh. There we go. Zoom in. Mm. Focus, focus. Exposure. Mm. You like? I'm. I'm worried about. Yeah, yeah I think it's going to be. A, it's going to be a lot of manganese crust. I think. I and that on top too. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. I, you Grab can put, the other one. Let's look for another one. Yeah. You can put back. Uh, now I want to make sure that I say it right. What? Pohaku. Oh. Pohaku. Pohaku. All right. Yes. So look for a different one. Yes. So the one that was like so the right. Lock? Yes. <laughs> oh, there you go. Let's the look one that you just it. hit. <laughs> Did that just break open? No. That was like that. No, I mean oh. the one you just dropped. No, it yeah. It had that white part on the bottom. Oh. Okay. okay. Rats. I was hoping it broke open, right? Oh, oh. up in the, that one, that one, yeah. That one. Yes, the one, yes. 
this is somewhere to choose from. The one we dropped looks like it's that one side's painted with that super black paint. That doesn't have the any Vanta black. Sediment. Yeah. Did you say Fanta? Vanta black. Vanta black. Fanta. Vanta. The v. Almost invisible. I don't know what that means. I don't know. It's either. a, it's a color coloration black. that a lot of deep sea fish use. Ooh. That's pretty much absorbs 99.9 percent oh, no. of light. It's stuck. It's stuck. Okay. Okay, moving on. Let's see. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm thinking. Uh, I'm try sure this one. Move. That one's please. What about? Yeah. No one's not oh yeah. Anywhere. Don't. Maybe this one. Um, it's like a skid knock one. That loose there. Can we like? Right at the bottom of the can. Maybe lift up and move further up here. That was my attempt at an arrow. Yep. A little hop, skip, and a jump. Hop, skip, and a jump. Box still open. Probably okay. Box is still open. Yeah, I don't think there's anything right. on our right. Mm. Ooh, this. If any of these are loose, they could be good. They look interesting. They look flatter, and, or not flatter, but they look more angular. Yes. This is stuck. Hey, oh it's not gosh. stuck. Thank goodness. It's not stuck. I know. <laughs> Thank God. It's funny how you stress about that. Oh, Oof. Up. Oh, there <laughs> oh go. my God. Thankfully, you missed the still camera, because that would have been a bad day. <laughs> kind of gone far. We can get it. Oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> It wasn't perfect like the last one. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. There's okay. There's, one next, next to it. There's more fish in the sea. Yeah. There's more rocks on the sea moat. We're gonna see it as soon as we lift off. Um. That's weird. That looks like, that looks like all crust. I think some of the manganese crust came off when yeah, you grabbed just, it. Yeah, that's just yeah. all crust. Yeah. Definitely don't want that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was left behind. Yeah. Rough. <laughs> Try this one. Malia, I think you're muted. Yeah, I'm just, can we please be a little bit more respectful? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. This. If you could lift it a little higher for the, the lasers as well, please. Mm. All right. Thank you. We don't need to take it if it's not good. Yeah. We can just uh, we can just move on and find a rock somewhere else if these are all too manganese coated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm worried that since we found one, 
that they might all be like that. Yeah, that's fine. We can uh, we we can just uh, get the vehicles moving again and uh, maybe stop between four and five. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your patience. So for the viewers um, who are wondering why I said that, is that um, as Kanako O'iwi, as the indigenous people of Hawaii, we are genealogically connected to all life forms. And so, um, you know, when there's samples and collecting going on, um, you know, we are very mindful that these are relatives to us, that these are um, our ancestors, and so, you know, having that gratitude and respectful manner is part of the um, protocols um, in these places, in these indigenous spaces. And so just, you know, reminders for all of us that these are somebody's ancestors and um, it would behoove us to um, the one I dropped remember that. Originally. Wait, really? Yes. Oh, I'm too worried that it might just be all manganese. Yeah, we can just move on. And yeah, thanks, Malia, for, for reminding us of that. So we'll um, we'll make sure that if we're going to not recover a, a rock sample, we'll place it back. And then just, you know, being respectful when we're, we're um, choosing our samples. that's not a sign for all of them. Yeah, we'll take a look at the, the next um, spot between rises. But now I'm curious about the other rock that was collected. I wonder what that will look like. Yeah, does that, that was on uh, the first watch. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, we'll take a look. I mean, the nice thing is that you know, it may not be what um, is is of interest to the, the current uh, objective, but there are plenty of people who want to study these uh, crusts. So having these samples available at oh. the Rock and Core Lab for other people to analyze and take a look at is certainly a, a good use of that. So um, there's there's still de definitely a lot of value in having these samples collected uh, for future yeah. analysis. So what we're looking at right here is a live ferret sponge. We've seen a couple of dead ones long as we've climbed up the um, ridge, but this one is alive because it has the bright white coloration. Oh, wow, look at that texture. It's so kupayanaha. Kupayanaha. I think I see a possible red shrimp in there, a little red dot. Yes, I see it. Looks like the Nepali coastline a little bit. Cliff on Kauai. What kind of sponge is this, um, Sebastian? A ferret sponge. What's that, F-E-R-R-I-D? Um, F-A-R-R-I-D-A-E. Faraday. Ah, Faraday, got it. And those are the ones we saw earlier that were um, laying on their sides that were dead. Can we get a zoom yes. on the inside, please? Yes, Miss Williams. Sure, go for zoom. I believe so. Oh, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. So amazing to see one living and see all of its fullness. Yeah. You can see the shrimp taking shelter there. It looks like it has maybe something underneath it, maybe some eggs. Oh, yeah, maybe. That's a tiny shrimp. Yeah. I think there's another sponge behind that rock. Yeah, over here. Probably a lot smaller. Yeah. The dead ones that we've been seeing, they look like really flat. Um, so I don't know what I was expecting when we saw one that was living. 
Yeah, right? yeah, they, yeah. Well, the dead ones have like collapsed in on themselves. Yeah. Yeah, because normally we see like almost like a triangle shape with the dead ones. Yeah. Because it's just falling apart into pieces, so the side pieces have fallen off somewhere else. Yeah, that makes sense. And they don't have the long stalk. That um, they have the a small stalk. Yeah. They are different. So these are ferrets, uh, while well, the other ones are. Um, the one with the yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I forgot the name for that one. Um, which are more stalked and they have kind of like more of a mushroom shape with the stalk going into it. These guys are much larger filter feeders, right, relying yeah. on to, like having more space over more narrowed Please do currents. a ship move 30 meters at bearing 220. Two two Speed, 0 0.2. All right, whenever you guys are ready to move on. Yeah, uh, Derek just put in a ship move, so we should be moving on in a minute. Um, so for viewers who are just tuning in, we're on a place called the Gambia Shoal. Um, it's a seamount that has a bit of a cross or X shape to it. Um, so there's like a, a north, a south, an east, and a west uh, uh, line coming out that make two ridges. And so we're coming up. We went. Uh, we launched to the north and are coming south going uphill uh, from a depth of about 2,500 meters uh, towards... We're not going to quite reach the summit, but we're can going we up this ridge line. Can I zoom on what's on these rocks right here? These little, like, growing? little yellow dots uh, and we've been um, moving up along the western ridge western side of the ridge um, taking a look at the the geology here it's mostly a low bait lava flow that has manganese crusting on it we're looking for a sample of some of this rock that's loose um, when we come across it uh, that we're trying to find one that's more angular without a lot of the manganese crust on it so we're going to keep our eye out for that and also documenting the, the type of biology that's growing on these rocks. Those barnacles? They look like barnacles to me. Small white, yellow barnacles all over a rock. Thank you. I've never seen like these super small ones just all over the place. Typically yeah. you see a little bit larger ones. So barnacles are really interesting. I think someone was studying them because they have this glue, like this really, you know, they're, they hold oh, fast. Oh, yeah, that stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so I know somebody was studying them in regards to creating like a, a type of glue like an that. An adhesive, yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize that, I mean, obviously we know that barnacles will grow on like a dock or a pier or the underside of a ship, but I didn't know that barnacles were in the deep sea. Yeah, there are several deep sea species. Yeah, so that's cool. I just, yeah, I had no idea. But yeah, Malia, that's a good, that's a, a good idea to, because yeah, study, they, these things yeah. are stuck on really they hard. They really are. <laughs> that's a, a good like natural cement. adhesive, yeah. <laughs> that's why I always think that mother nature and nature is the best designer. Oh, for sure, yeah. Why is this guy sticking out? Which, this one? Yes. Is that a... It looks like a black coral. Over zoom. Bridge now. Oh, wow. It is some type of... looks like it's some type of dying bathy pathy. It has two stops. Oh, yeah. Oh, Tina says this is a uh, parantipathies. This is an amazing rock formation. I hate Hannah's missing it. They're awesome. Yeah. It has fantastic biology and rock formations. Mm 
Then can we get a zoom of this long guy right here too, in front? Oh, not that guy, the one that's sticking out right here. I know, so the four. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> like we're going to the sponge, I was worried. All right, let's see. This guy looks like an extra large um, Chrysogorgia of some sort. Can we get a zoom when you get a chance? in between two walls. All right, go for zoom. Wow. That's kind of a pinkish coloration. A red symbiont, I think it's a shrimp. Can we see the very top of it again? Um, it's kind of branching at the end, which is interesting. Any idea, Asanko? She thinks it might be a very old colony of just Chrysogorgia. It probably relates to the ones in the back, I imagine. All right, thank you guys. Oh, well, there's more. Wow. Oh, and then there's whoever that guy is right there. It's really interesting, too. Oh, wow. Are these, like, very large, even more large um, fan Chrysogorgids, possibly? There's a lot of uh, marine snow in the water column, so that's good for these uh, filter feeders. Should we possibly take a niskin here? Uh, that's up to you. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, let's go ahead and try and grab a niskin when we have the chance. All right. I'm going to set up a boat. Boulder. We get the bio camera off, port camera on, please. Come for five? Yes, please. Unnumbered. 